Hey, what's up everyone? As all the content creators are doing right now, we're kind of warming up, getting ready for league start season. And over the past couple of days, what I've done is been, you know, just practicing my fire trap elementalist and trying to get back into the groove of things. Basically the main thing I wanted to do here was to address concerns that people had with the build, try to tweak it and make it more comfortable as well as integrate the learnings that I had by league starting this build, this league. And that really comes down to two big changes here. The really big one is I made a video about it a couple days into the league, but you know, a lot of people just watch the build guide and they don't follow up and follow all the stuff that I do. I strongly recommend if you're following one of my league starts, like, you know, I put as much content as I can out there for, you know, watch a video. I do an update video every single day. Here's the things, here's the tweaks. Like you can never perfectly predict what a league's gonna feel like. Anyway, something that a lot of people missed is a couple days into the league, I switch from dual wielding into using a shield. And the big thing about this is it allows us to use shield charge. The big problem with Leap Slam is it has a very big cooldown, you know, particularly if you have low attack speed, which this build does, because you know it's not an attack build. If you have very low attack speed, there's a big delay between your leap slam. So you're like walking, leap slam, you have to walk a couple steps, leap slam again, you know, interweaving in some frost blinks. There's some additional mechanical complexity there. In addition with, you know, managing your Frostblink cooldown, that was a thing I think was like the biggest complaint that people had. One of the big things, not to mention that a shield obviously is much more defensively oriented. And like I said in the, in the original build guide, this is a build that just gets damaged basically for free. In this configuration, like I've spent, uh, let's say about three-ish divines. In this configuration, still at like 4.5 million DPS without even trying, you know, on, on a five link, right? This is with a shield, entirely oriented around being as defensive as possible. And so like the mechanical complexity simplification there is pretty huge. And just the defense from the shield is really, really big. And I think that's, uh, you know, you can cap your spell suppression a lot more easily, a lot of life, evasion, armor, everything. That's the first one that I was gonna do anyway. And then the other one is integrating in Vortex Ignite. Big thing about this build was managing the Frostwing cooldown. And I, maybe I didn't explain it properly in the build guide, but you know, the way that Frostblink works is, as you can see, additional cooldown recovery rate when you do it over a pack of enemies. The big thing that you wanted to do is Frostblink between packs of enemies, and then the cooldown will get reset almost instantly. But you know, if there's a couple stragglers and you use your Frostblink to ignite them, and then the next pack, it's not ready. You know, even if you did it perfectly, it can still feel a little uncomfortable. So the thing that I thought is like Vortex Ignite is kind of like the cousin to my build. You know, generally same idea where you use a cooldown based cold skill with cold to fire to then ignite the enemies with ignite prolif and all that, like kind of independently organically grown builds that are kind of like cousins to each other. And so I thought, why not combine them? And the kind of cool thing about this is if we're in a leak start scenario, you know, we're talking about just using a five link, you know, I, I took my six link out here. If we're on a five link anyway, you know, we get the value here of having a pseudo five link in our gloves. And this is what we were doing before, is we are pseudo five linking either fire trap or frost blink in our gloves, because we can use the essence of delirium to, to guarantee this on the suffix here. You know, if we're in a leak start scenario, we're using fire trap anyway for our single target damage. So this is really just a double four link right here with vortex and frost blink with ignite prolif, cold to fire and combustion support right here. And so, you know, as you've seen, is I'm using Vortex on our left click right here. And what this means is we just get significantly more chances to ignite the enemy as we're walking around. Again, this is still a fire trap focused build. This is still our single target. It's not building entirely into Vortex whatsoever, but all it's doing is taking out one of the links for Frostblink, putting in Vortex, and just getting more chances to ignite the enemies. Like regardless, we're using fire trap anyway for the harder rares and, and whatever, you know, particularly like cycling damage reduction rares, anything like that. You know, honestly, Frostblink could kind of give up a little bit of damage because this build has so much inherently. Um, and in fact, I'll show you how little damage I've invested right now. And this just allows us to clear a lot more cleanly. So uh, we address the squishiness issue quite a bit by, you know, being able to use a shield. You know, the big thing I'm going to emphasize in the build guide is make sure you cap your spell suppression or get as close to cap as possible. I didn't focus on that enough in the original build guide. So a lot of people were like, Hey, I have negative 60 chaos. Well, they didn't say this, but like build a squishy and I look at it and you know, they didn't fo they didn't cap their chaos res or get it high enough. And they didn't focus on spell suppression. You know, even though it was in the build guide, that was something that they just didn't, you know, zero in on when they were looking at the POB. So I'm going to emphasize that a lot more. And then I totally recognize that there are some hardcore players out there that are going to look at my POB and they're going to say, Oh, your Fizmax hits like 6k. Oh, cry, cry, cry. 
And th this is the thing is if you have good evasion, I have okay, I have like, I have some armor, right? So like while you're mapping, it's good. If you have decent evasion, decent life pool, Fizz max hit, I don't, in my opinion, in soft core, doesn't really matter that much. But this is a thing that we absolutely can solve if you need to. So the big thing is on the body armor, I would recraft this with uh, physical damage reduction on the suffix. The other thing is I was using a lightning coil before, but unfortunately, I so I evolved. This this is a thing that that sucks when you're trying to do like league start testing and you get lucky. So I had a lightning coil and I wanted to vol it so I could six link it with uh, with tainted currency, right? And so that's a very cheap way. If you have a unique, you could just use a vol orb, tainted currency, very easy six links, very easy to do in a league start scenario. Unfortunately, I volled it and I hit something really really good. <laughs> so uh, the big thing that I would recommend is if you care about fizz max hit, you can use a combination of a lightning coil and a dawnbreaker. And then your Fizz Max hit gets way, way better. It's actually really, really nice at that point. So if you care about that, if you're in a more hardcore scenario, um, that's fine. But I have found that, you know, besides standing in like a big Minotaur or Drox Slam, um, I don't really care. I have decent evasion. I have a decent life pool. So that's myself personally. But yeah, Lightning Coil, particularly if you can get level of socket to AoE gems, is pretty sick. Uh, with the Dawnbreaker as well. And then on top of that, if you really want to, you could drop Tempest Shield, get Shock Immunity somewhere else, and then you can run Purity of Fire. And then Dawnbreaker with that, you're going to be looking really, really good. Then with like 80, 81 max Fire Res, that's going to look really, really good with the Dawnbreaker right there. So that's my recommendation if you care about Fizz Max Hit. You know, I personally, I would like a little bit more Fizz Max Hit, but in a League Start-ish scenario, I think that this is totally fine. And then the other modifications that I made. So as you can see, I have one Cluster Jewel that I just Alteration Regal spam this. Um, just, I, this is the first three notable one that I hit prismatic heart, sadist, widespread destruction, whatever. I have a couple like, okay, jewels in here, nothing crazy whatsoever. Just a couple. Okay. Jewels. That's it. The big pathing difference that we did here, because we're not really relying on traps too much. Like, you know, previously we're going all the way down here. We were taking these trap nodes. Really, this is a build where you're just, you know, getting that quality life of uh, frost blink and vortex. So yeah. Because we're losing the Crucible Tree, we're going to path through here. We're going to take Eldritch Battery. This also allows us to grab Searing Heat, which is 20% more damage right here. You know, kind of, because we have some other faster Ignites. Then this also allows us to more easily grab Lethe Shade, which is great for dealing with damage over time. And then, yeah, we're just not pathing down here right now. You know, this is at level 91 currently. I'm pretty happy with this at the moment. I know that this looks kind of scuffed, and, you know, this area we'd probably drop a little bit later too, but... Besides that, I think this is a uh, pretty decent pathing right now. Very similar to Ben's POB, actually. This is the other really cool thing about using Shield Charge is we can use a Wand, Rune Dagger, or Scepter. We don't care about which one it is. And this allows us to buy, you know, we have so many more options, especially Rune Daggers, not very popular. We can buy things very cheap. I bought this base for 35 Chaos, and it was listed for three months. This was listed three months ago for 35 Chaos. And I was very lucky that the person, you know, the person was online. You can search for damage over time multiplier, fire damage over time multiplier, you know, flat damage, plus level. Plus level gems is obviously better. I'm trying to, like, keep the investment very low, right? So I just hit this with a couple Scorch Fossils, like five. I hit something decent, and then I crafted fire damage. And that's it. That's all I got on this. Uh, helmet has the enchant on it, but, you know, that's just a single target. Doesn't help clear. My defensive items are very good. This is just, to me, show what I think you should invest into when you want to invest into it. You know, this is in the three to five divine range. This is a few days into the league, a week into the league, depending on, on how you play. My defensive items are really good, but the other stuff is pretty trash. Like, look at my jewelry. <laughs> I'm very purposely, this is the cheapest anoint that I could put on. It was like five chaos total. We're talking very, very bad jewelry. Purposely, all crafted life and everything. You know, bottom of the barrel, nothing special. I just had this belt sitting in my stash. Bad, bad jewelry, very average weapon that you can put together very cheap. One unique in the entire build right now. And then, yeah, this is the, this is the nice gear, is the defensive stuff. So this is basically where all, where all the three divines goes. We're on a five link. All the damage gems I bought at level 21 right here. You know, level these up yourself. This is priority in 21-0 on the frost blank. Um, you can do 21-0 on, on vortex as well. This just gives us AOE, no more damage. Um, and then just a, a bad corruption 2110 fire trap right here. And then not a single alternate quality gem, not a single awakened gem. So anyway, that's, uh, that's my little intro right there. All right. And we'll do a quick little demonstration with Minotaur right here. Um, yeah, honestly, this all started with me just kind of, I want to do an act five run, just kind of, you know, get my feet wet again. And I ended up having so much fun and just started tweaking the build. I've been, uh, yeah, I like guess leveled back up to 91, you know, no five ways or cheating or anything. And just having fun kind of tweaking the build and trying to make the best League Start build that I can for you guys. 
And yeah, I'm pretty happy to say, I think this is going to be pretty, pretty good for you guys. I think you guys are going to like it. If you're on the fence or, you know, it felt like a little off for you or you really like the build, I think you're going to like this even more. Um, so like the cool thing is, right, like I'm at like 4.1 million DPS. We can go up to 7, 8 million really, really quickly by, you know, just getting a six link, just getting plus one gem level on the amulet, plus one on the weapon, which is not hard, right? That's only a couple divines on league start. And I think, uh, you know, once you're in that category, you know, seven, eight, nine million DPS with ignite, you're pretty good. You're going to be pretty happy. But even like this, right? Like I'm, I took out my six link. I'm clearing pretty well with the vortex and the, uh, the frost blank. And in fact, they would do more damage if I actually swapped them with Fire Trap and the gloves because you get the, uh, the socket AoE gems. So there's a lot of little things you can tweak based on, you know, if you're doing more single target or not. But I think just always having the uh, access to, to Vortex coming out in addition to the, uh, the Frost Blink. Just makes it really comfortable. Takes off a lot of mechanical complexity, I think, for for most players. So you want to get the Scorched Ground on them. You want to get both curses. Keep your malevolence up. So pretty comfortable, right? You know, not insane damage whatsoever, but, you know, we're just on the pseudo five link right here on our gloves, and that's it. That's our single target. So, yeah, that's it. I just want to quickly share with you guys the stuff I've been playing around with the past couple days. League start guide will be coming. We got patch notes on Thursday, three days from now. Not that much to, uh, you know, really do besides doing practice runs and start tweaking things and getting ourselves excited for 322. So I'm looking forward to it. Hope you guys are too. Thanks for watching. I'm going to go get ready for the stream. See y'all later. Bye.